Well, good day, beloved. It is a new week. Can you believe it? And uh, this is the teaching room where God speaks and we listen and we learn and we live his unchanging word through the power of the Holy Spirit alone. Amen. And this program is all about uh, God's Word and digging in and letting it wash over us, letting it affect our lives, let it transform our lives. And I hope you are ready to continue today through the book of Colossians. Hard to believe that we're already in uh, chapter 2 of this amazing book. Uh, before we get started, I just want to mention again to uh, click the subscribe button below the screen here and um, get in on all that we have for you, for the body of Christ, on our website. Um, and the videos each week, as I said before, are just highlights of uh, each lesson. But if you really want to dig in, you got to go to the website, www reverenddarren.com and there you will find uh, our in-depth Bible studies with uh, questions and study points and um, just a more in-depth approach to the scriptures and uh, I am so happy that you are here and we're on this journey together and none of us has arrived in the area of, of Bible study um, God has set it up that way so that we could never exhaust his, the riches uh, that are available through the Word of God. It is, uh, it's an honor and a privilege to open this book with you today. And uh, I hope that the, the, the presence of Jesus is with us today. And um, I, I, below the subscribe button, by the way, below here, is the link to uh, the website and the website has all kinds of resources for the body of Christ um, but in particular the teaching room is for you and we created it uh, so that it's easy to understand and um, but it'll take you into a deeper realm with the Word of God let's welcome the Holy Spirit today before we get started he is our teacher amen Thank you, Father, for your um, faithfulness to us, Lord. Every morning, the Bible says, your mercies are new and great is your faithfulness. So we give you praise and honor and glory, Father, for your word today. You are amazing. You have not left us to flounder and, and fall in this world. Rather, you have given us a strong foundation in truth through the word of God. Thank you, Father. Would you illuminate your word today? Bring it to life that we may understand it and apply it and let it um, transform our minds and lives today, Father. In Jesus' name, bless every person watching today, Father. Every person listening, God, would we all come away from this study encouraged and ready to dig deeper. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, to get started, we want to understand that, that Paul here is, is writing from the Roman prison. And Epaphras has given him a report that is... Uh, a glowing report of the Colossian church that Epaphras himself had um, participated in growing and developing. So Paul here is in a very good state of mind, but he also has some words of exhortation along the way for the Colossian believers. And we're going to see that today. And he wants them to understand that he is praying for them, he is rooting for them. He is proud of them. And he wants to encourage, encourage, encourage their walk with Jesus 
so that they can grow in the grace and knowledge of Jesus Christ. Colossians 2.1 says, I want you to know how hard I am contending for you and for those at Laodicea and for all who have not met me personally. King James Version says, For I would that ye knew what great conflict I have for you and for them at Laodicea and for as many as have not seen my face in the flesh. So what is he contending with exactly if he's locked up in a prison so to speak even though it's house arrest what is he contending with for the colossian believers we know that that is prayer that's right prayer paul is a praying man god has developed him into a praying man in fact he prays without ceasing and here we see that he has great conflict. He's contending for those uh, in the Colossian church and also those in the nearby Laodicean church. And his contending is really getting into the spiritual realm and dealing with all of the things that come against new believers dealing with all the things he knows will come against them. And in this case, they know that there are false teachers uh, lurking about, sneaking into the Colossian midst, and trying to alter their walk, get them off course just enough to cause uh, discord and problems within their walk. The Christian walk, we have to say, is definitely a simple thing in and of itself. Following Jesus is simply keeping our eyes fixed on the Lord, right? We know that Jesus is the head of the church, and we keep our eyes on him. But during this walk, we know that there's going to be many, many distractions and many things that uh, the evil one throws at us. The world throws at us, people throw at us, um, to try and get us off track. Because Jesus is accepted by us into our hearts. He is not accepted by all. And so we may have situations where we're with family, and you are the believer, and no one else believes and you better believe there's going to be conflict there's going to be problems and we are not of the world we were purchased by god out of the world he owns us now and for the colossian believers here um, you know paul wants them to know that he's contending he's in the race He's holding them up before the throne of grace of God. And he's saying, sanctify them by your truth, God. Grow them. Protect them. Bless them that they may bless others. Let them be a witness to the nation, to the neighbor. And so he is holding them up in the spiritual much like we do today with our brothers and sisters in Christ. And you know what? It's a good thing to hold up others from other uh, churches, denominations, um, because we are one body of Christ. You are either part of the body of Christ or you are not part of the body of Christ. There really is no in-between here. And I think it's this awesome thing I think it's pleasing to God when we uh, love our brothers and sisters in Christ by praying for them, by contending for them. Now, of course, our general focus is going to be the local body that we're a part of, the local church family that we are a member of. But there's going to be times when God asks us to participate with other churches and other uh, denominations in order to build up 
the body of Christ through prayer. Paul here has uh, one thing in mind, and that is to see the Colossian uh, believers thrive in their walk. And that is the heart of God right there, to see us grow. Um, I don't know about you, but a year from now, I don't want to be the same man I am today. I want to see the changes spiritually, character-wise. Um, I don't want to stay in this place. There's, there's areas of my life that I know that God has shown me that need to change. And I'm sure the same is true of all of us. And so, and so it is for Paul and his Colossian church. He wants to see them changing, growing, gr growing in, in Christ-likeness and growing in their effectiveness, growing in their power in the Holy Spirit growing in their awareness of their gifts and, and growing in what? <laughs> love. It's the love quotient, 1 Corinthians 13. Love is truly a good barometer of the health of the local church. If you see love abounding one to another, what a great witness to the world and what a great indicator of the health of that church. And what's truly amazing about this verse that I love is it says, and for as many as have not seen my face in the flesh, people he has not even met before, he has a burden for. People that were birthed through the ministry of Epaphras, whom Epaphras preached to right? He preached them. He discipled them. He worked with them. And you know he loved them. Well, here's Paul, by extension, saying, I bless those who I don't even know, who haven't even met me personally. I bless them. And I'm praying for them. He wants them to know that. And that is supernatural my beloved. <laughs> that is simply a supernatural event when we can, uh, without having, having, having met someone, have a burden for them and pray for them. Um, that's, that is awesome. Let's look at Colossians 2 and verse 2. And it says, that their hearts might be comforted, being knit together in love, and unto all riches of the full assurance of understanding, to the acknowledgement of the mystery of God and of the Father and of Christ. So he wants them to be encouraged in heart, united in love, so that they can experience the full riches of complete understanding in the Word of God, and that they may know that mystery that we talked about well, uh, last week, which is, of course, the hope of glory. Christ in them, and the power, and the rich inheritance, and the insight, and the wisdom that comes from, from having Jesus live inside of you forever. And we need to grab a hold of that today. We need to understand the power that is at our disposal here. And God does not want us to live a life of defeat and failure but one of success and victory, of course, victory through him. I want to add that through him, <laughs> through him alone, through the Holy Spirit alone, through the hope of glory alone. Now, this idea of their hearts being comforted, this idea of them being united comes from them be staying connected to Jesus. And if they see a brother or a sister who is becoming disconnected from Jesus, they will take that person and they will encourage them and exhort them and pray for them so that they become again united in love. 
We need to be doing that in our local churches. When we see a brother or sister, especially during this whole uh, pandemic, uh, people have a tendency to isolate sometimes or, or drift away from our church families. We need to uh, lovingly um, pray for them and encourage them to come home and be a part of what you're doing in the local body because they are a member of the family. And we want our family members to be present. We want all the parts of the body of Christ to be healthy. And um, this is what Paul had in mind when he wrote this, this verse specifically. He wants them to have all that Jesus intends for them. And he even says uh, in a modern translation, it says, My goal is that they may be encouraged in heart and, and united in love. That's his goal, to see them thrive and encouraged and united and together and, and walking it out. And he also wants them to understand that the knowledge, the insight, and the wisdom into God's word and into God's ways come from Jesus living inside of them. He wants them to understand that to seize that, and to live that out. The world doesn't need more religion. The world needs more power. They need to see the power of God manifest in each of us through the hope of glory that's come to live inside of us. Is that amazing? That is absolutely incredible. And I want you to think about that this week because... Um, this is this gift, this hope of glory is not just for the Colossian church. It's for each of us who've accepted Jesus as our Lord and our Savior. Let's look at Colossians 2, 3. And it says, in, ho in whom are hid all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. And this is just a continuation of what I just said uh, in, in the previous verse. That we now have access to wisdom and knowledge. Now, we could take the Word of God and we could dissect it and analyze it in a purely academic way. Uh, many seminaries do this. Many colleges, universities, they teach the Word of God in the sense that it is an academic book which is just vast in its natural knowledge. You could never exhaust um, what it has to offer. Even in the academic realm, it is just incredible uh, what the Bible can do. Now, we also know as believers that it is a supernatural book. So while we are engaging our minds, we're also engaging the Spirit of God and letting the Holy Spirit teach us things that could not be seen outside of his illumination. That's what this verse is about. In whom are hid all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. Now that word hid there means that it is not accessible except through the Spirit of God. So academics, scholars, anyone who is outside of a relationship with God through Jesus Christ, to do this, does not, do not have access to that information. This is a supernatural illumination of God's word that Paul's talking about here. And it's, it's very important that before we dig into the word, even when we get up in the morning, um, always, always pray, ask God, God to give you that illumination through the Holy Spirit. Commit your studies, commit your devotional times in prayer always because God wants to speak to us supernaturally. In Colossians 2 4, it says, And this I say, lest any man should beguile you with enticing words or fine sounding arguments, is another way to put it. 
anything that comes against the believer that tries to get them off track by just a little bit, that's not God. <laughs> we know from the Garden of Eden, right? Did God really say? Did he really say that, Eve? <laughs> Are you sure about that? But not only that, creating doubt is one way to deceive. But presenting other doctrines, false doctrines, is another way to push a believer off the track. And we see this all the time in, in 2020. You know, here we are with just uh, so many ministries online now and on, and on cable. Um, we really need discernment to stay on track and not move to the left or the right, but to consistently remove our foot from evil and stay on the path of righteousness, the path to Jesus, the head of the church, and stay in his word so that we can identify counterfeits, of course, when they come on the horizon. And at no other time in history have we needed this more. We need discernment. And Paul here is exhorting the Colossians to watch out for these people with enticing words. Things that sound spiritual and appealing. Mostly they appeal to the flesh. If you can say something to a person that appeals to their flesh, they are more likely to believe it and want to believe it than anything Jesus would have died for, the truth that Jesus died for, which is, in the Bible, it's called the narrow way. We know that um, there is a broad way that many go through it, right? But there is a narrow way. And that's the way to Jesus. That's the way to eternal life. That's the way to reconciliation with God and relationship with him forever. So Paul does not want his new believers to be subjected to lies, half lies, or I should say half truths, and deceptions of the false teachers. Uh, who are all about their secret knowledge. That they were Gnostics. They were um, putting forth philosophies and ways of look, ways of reaching God that were that were enticing in an intellectual way, in a fleshly way. But but at the end of the day, they weren't gospel. They weren't the word of God. And Paul wants them to pay attention pay attention and not be pulled aside to not be pulled aside from their walk with Jesus because and I think even today we need to be very very careful of what of what teachings we take in because um, everything needs to be tested first John 4 1 says that we must test the spirits to see if they are of God the context of 1 John is one, again, of false prophets lurking about within John's flock. Um, he does not want his believers, whom he loves and cares for, to be pulled aside by false doctrines and false teachers. And we need to learn to discern and i'll say that again we need to learn to discern it's a learning process how do we learn to discern we become so familiar with the word of god meditate on it day and night and it becomes our thought process it becomes our heart as we hide the word of god in our hearts that we would sin against god we also hide the word of God in our hearts, that we have a defense against um, falsehood and deception. Test, test, 
test all things against God's word. And that is, um, if I were to stop right there, I think that would be enough. <laughs> Learn to discern. Test everything against scripture. Even test your own pastor's uh, sermons against scripture. I think he wants you to do that. Go home. Think about it. What did he say? What did she say? What did, um, what was the theme? What were the, uh, um, the scriptures that he presented? And just check it out for yourself. That's why God gave us his word. We know about the Bereans. They tested Paul's teachings to see if those things were so that Paul said. And then again in 1 John, it says to test the spirits to see if they are of God. Please devote yourself to this beloved test, especially in these perilous times, these uh, deceptive times. And God will bless your walk and you will have clarity of mind you will have clear direction you will hear his voice amen let's move on to colossians 2 5 and this is the last verse for today because this is kind of a subsection of of chapter 2 that i wanted to cover today and it says for though i be absent in the flesh Yet am I with you in the spirit, joying and beholding your order and the steadfastness of your faith in Christ. Modern translation here. For though I am absent from you in body, I am present with you in spirit and delight to see how disciplined you are and how firm your faith in Christ is. So again, Paul's echoing the fact that He's in prison. He hasn't met the Colossian believers, but he's burdened for them. He's praying for them. He is contending for them. He loves them. That's the first thing. And he is with them in the Holy Spirit. He doesn't have to be with them physically. He's with them in the Holy Spirit. He is delighted to see um, the Colossian believers, I'll just read this to you. He's delighted to see them disciplined. Wow. <laughs> Is that a word? Is that a heavy loaded word? Disciplined. You know what? There is discipline in the Christian walk. I think for young believers, there's so much joy and so much, uh, uh, praise and, and worship and, and, you know, emotion attached to it. But as you grow, God really is looking for a disciplined life that, po that positions you to receive the word, that positions you to hear the still small voice of the, of the Holy Spirit, that positions you for spiritual success. And when I say success, I mean a walk with Jesus that is bearing much fruit and glorifying God. That's what I mean by success in the Christian walk. Paul here is delighted that the Colossian believers are learning discipline, the disciplines of prayer, the disciplines of study, the disciplines of meditation, the disciplines of love, the disciplines of forgiveness, bearing fruit for the gospel and positioning themselves for spiritual success. Today, we have that opportunity. God's given us every great resource we need for life and godliness. And he wants to set us up to be successful to prosper in him, to experience him in relationship, 
more and more, from degree to degree, from glory to glory, more of Jesus, more and more of Jesus. And as we look into the face of Jesus, we will see ourselves changing. Change after change after change. But grow in the grace and knowledge of Jesus. That's our life as Christians. And I hope you are in a position where um, God can speak to you. Where your heart has been cleansed. Where your mind is clear. Your conscience is clear. You're in a good place to receive the word of God. Position yourself, beloved, for success. God wants that for you today. Paul also says here how firm their faith in Christ is. And what does that mean in the practical? It means that we are giving God our attention and we are giving God our affection. We're loving the Lord our God with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength. Very, very simply, we are investing in the relationship. Seek first the kingdom of God, his kingdom priorities, and his righteousness through Jesus. And everything else will be added by God. Everything we need, practically, in this life will be added. We are not called to a life of strife and anxiety, but a life of peace and joy, all the fruits of the Holy Spirit are ours today. And God is gonna develop those in us and through us all through our walk. It's a process. And it only gets better as we get closer to him and closer to that day when he calls us home or when he returns. It's an awesome reality. Paul wants the Colossian believers to embrace this truth. Now, he's not saying rest on your laurels, Colossians. Uh, you've done great. Thanks for coming out. Uh, you can rest now. What he's saying is, uh, keep going. Keep running the race. You're doing good. He's a cheerleader for, for these believers. So I want to read through this verse just one more time. And um, before we finish up, I'm going to leave you with uh, just something that's been on my heart uh, lately. Let me read this one more time to you. For though I be absent in the flesh, yet am I with you in the spirit, joying and beholding your order and the steadfastness of your faith in Christ. So from the report from Epaphras, Paul has formed this report, if you will, in his mind and in his heart. And he's thankful. Beloved, this is my parting message for today. When you see spiritual uh, development in another brother or sister, tell them. Acknowledge it. Tell them how proud you are of them. And, and tell them specifically what you've noticed. We need to acknowledge when God is working in you and when God is working in me. We need to say something and be observant. Look around you and see whose lives God is really stirring, whose, whose hearts he's really stirring up and, and developing. Um, in their walk. And when you see 
spiritual growth, acknowledge it. This is not just the job of the pastor. This is your responsibility one to another. There, I said it. <laughs> Thank you so much for being here in the teaching room. I'm Reverend Darren, and uh, it has been an awesome journey thus far. We're going to continue through Colossians, God willing, next week. And uh, I hope you have an, an amazing week in the Word, an amazing week in God's presence. You are loved, you are valued, and um, stay in the race. Okay? We'll see you later. Bye-bye.